Hi folks, welcome to Astronomy Live. In my previous video I showed some new software I created for simulating the future night sky filled with Starlink satellites launched by SpaceX. SpaceX is launching Starlink satellites to provide high bandwidth, low latency internet connections to people all around the world using low Earth orbit satellites, and a lot of them, up to about 12,000 of them. And this has ramifications on how many satellites we'll see at night during the hours immediately following sunset and immediately preceding dawn when they will have line of sight to the sun and be reflecting sunlight. But it depends on the time of year and location as I demonstrated in my previous video. However, I had a lot of comments asking for uh, views from different locations as well as the inclusion of satellites at the proposed 1150 kilometer uh, shell which wasn't included in the, in the previous simulation. I only had two shells at 340 and 550 kilometers, which you can see outlined here on the Wikipedia page. There has been other information uh, put out there. Some others have contacted me um, telling me about additional high altitude shells. I don't know exactly what the final configuration is going to look like. Uh, so, to address all of these comments, I've created a new web page which implements my program as a web app and you can reconfigure the orbital shells how many satellites are going in each orbital shell how many orbital planes there are and what the altitude of each shell is as well as specify the time and location of uh, the chart additionally there were some requests for the actual orbital data so that people could display it in their own programs and basically visualize it in other software so you have two options you can either generate a sky chart or you can actually generate the TLE file of orbital elements for all of the satellites in the simulated constellation. So the website is how many starlinks will fill your sky.com. You'll find this in the video description uh, and you can go here and check it out. It's live right now and you can go to either the sky chart or uh, the TLE generator and right now this is very basic. Uh, I do want to add some more features in here eventually. I'd kind of like to add some IP tracking to automatically populate the coordinates. Right now it just starts off 0, 0. You have to enter your own GPS coordinates. Also note that longitude east is positive here by convention. So for those of us in the Western Hemisphere in the United States, for example, if you wanted to enter a location in Florida, for example, you would enter negative 80 degrees longitude and say 27 degrees north latitude. That'll put you somewhere in the vicinity of Florida. Uh, so you enter the date. Again, I would like to set this to automatically populate to the current day and time. I haven't done that yet, um, but I'll probably be adding and changing things here in the future. So let's say uh, right now by universal time, we're actually on May 31st. Uh, so let's see, the time right now is 116. That's going to be uh, one. 16 universal time I believe uh, and then you can configure the the orbital shells so 40 orbital planes right now this controls all of three orbital shells although I might I might break this out separately for each orbital shell in the future uh, but right now this controls all of them all at once so they're all stuck to the same number of orbital planes unfortunately again I might alter some of this a little bit in the future but that's what that means this is a uh, the number of orbital planes in each shell so uh, for those who don't know, that's dictated by the right ascension or longitude of the ascending node. And basically, uh, depending on what time of the day you launch, that's going to put you into a different orbital plane, even if your inclination is the same. The inclination right now is fixed at 53 degrees, which seems to be the inclination SpaceX is launching these satellites into. Uh, the satellites per plane in each shell you can define, and you can multiply that times the number of orbital planes to get the total number of satellites in each shell. So for example, 40 by 40, that'll give you 1,600 satellites in that first shell. And then on it goes through three orbital shells. So you specify all of that and then click generate chart. So now it will generate the chart and there it is. I will also point out uh, that there is, I won't call it a bug, it's a feature, sort of. Uh, I see something happened here where you need to specify the hours, the minutes, the seconds with padded zeros. So for example, one hour universal time needs to be um, zero one, not just 
one. If you do one, what it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, I see one. What's the next number I see? I see one in the 16 here. Oh, he must have meant uh, this goes up here. It's it's it is a bug, sort of. It's I'm not sure how to fix it exactly, but you can fix it uh, just by specifying padded zero. So for example, one hour universal time, specify zero one, not just one, and of course not one zero, because that's how it's going to interpret that sort of sort of. It's a little goofy, but that's what that is. So specify padded zeros on everything, really, to be safe. You should do that for day as well, because if I specify one on the day, I bet it's not going to do May 1st. It's probably going to do something else goofy. Yeah, May 10th. So pad your zeros in front of your single digit numbers here. So 0, 1, 0, 1, for example. Uh, but we'll come back here to May 31st, one hour universal time, generate chart. And there we go. So now we're at one hour, 16 minutes universal time. And you can see all of these green dots here. Each green dot represents one of the Starlink satellites. Each red dot represents a satellite that's currently up there uh, and is bright enough to be visible basically to the naked eye. So there's only seven of those satellites currently overhead. Seven satellites you could potentially see by naked eye from somewhere, some location around Florida. Uh, and a whole ton, 424 uh, Starlink satellites currently visible. So that's for Florida. But what if we increase the... Uh, well, first, let's increase the time. Let's go to 1 a.m. local time, which is going to be 5 universal time, and look at it again. So now we only have 145 Starlink satellites above the, con the, above the uh, horizon and illuminated by the sun. Uh, there are, of course, a bunch more that are still here. You just can't see them because they're not illuminated by the sun. And as some have pointed out, even those could potentially be a problem for professional astronomers. I can see a situation, although it seems unlikely, but with this number of satellites, it will probably happen sooner or later, you'll get occultations, random occultations of stars that you're watching. And if you're doing high cadence measurements of a star, maybe you're looking at a light curve or something, you might get an occultation from one of these Starlink satellites passing right in front of it just momentarily. Even if the satellite's not illuminated by anything, it'll still block out the star for a moment and possibly lead to false data. So there's an issue there too, isn't there? But for most of us just watching the sky, uh, we're not going to see these stars, or sorry, we're not going to see these satellites because they're in Earth's shadow. But these green dots here are illuminated by the sun and could show up in long exposures uh, and so forth. But they are pretty much constrained to the northern portion of the sky late in the evening, even here in Florida. Now that's during the summer. If you change this to winter, let's go to December and do the same thing you'll notice dramatic difference. There are no Starlink satellites above the horizon and visible uh, because they're all in Earth's shadow. And even this guy right here, he's probably uh, high in altitude. He might be, in, uh, it's actually representing a satellite that's currently up there, but it could be in an elliptical orbit that is only visible when it's closer to Earth than, than um, what it probably is there to be having line of sight to the sun. Anyway, um, that's, what the difference is there with looking at it close to the summer and looking at it in the winter. In the winter, uh, you won't see these satellites late at night, uh, but during the summer you will. And if you go to a higher latitude, let's go up to about the same latitude as New York, about 40 degrees north, you're going to have, even, uh, even at 1 a.m., you're going to have a ton of satellites over the sky, much more further in the north. Uh, it'll be a lot sparser, uh, closer to the zenith, and uh, in the south you basically have nothing because they're in Earth's shadow. But if you go to a location even further north, say around the United Kingdom, somewhere around 50 degrees north, maybe somewhere in Canada or something, uh, you're going to see satellites right through the middle of the sky from east to west crossing over the zenith at all hours of the night. Now these are going to be fairly dim satellites. From what I can tell from my own observations, they do tend to be pretty dim. Most of them will probably be below naked eye magnitude, or at least below naked eye magnitude you're likely to see from an urban location most of the time. Uh, they're probably going to hang around mag 5, mag 6, but some of them do reflect the sun quite well depending on the angle. You can get some bright flaring and you can just get some bright satellites occasionally it seems like. 
uh, that might be hanging up you know around magnitude 3 or so which would be naked eye visible from a decent location without having to be under extremely dark skies and they will definitely show up in long exposure photographs so you know this does have ramifications on what the night sky is going to look like from certain locations more than others so the closer you get to the inclination of the satellites in your latitude uh, the more seriously impacted you're going to be. Now if you go to, I don't know, some crazy location above the Arctic Circle, uh, the situation is going to be pretty much opposite, where they're in the south, and actually the sun's above the horizon here at, at this date, uh, close enough to the summer that you're getting midnight sun up here. But uh, the satellites are all clustered down towards the south. They're not really intended to serve as people up near the poles. So there's that. But basically you can enter, you know, whatever location you want, whatever time and date you want. Uh, I've got it set as well to update the epoch of the elements. There, the program will actually run a check and make sure that the date that the elements were created is reasonably close to the date that you're calculating. And so it would normally throw up an error from just reusing these elements years into the future. But I fixed that by basically uh, updating the date of the elements too, because these are just simulated orbital elements right here. We're not we're not trying to track actual satellites. We're just simulating what the sky will look like. So it dynamically updates the date of the orbital elements, uh, and it will do so as well when it generates the actual TLE files. So let's take a look at that now. The chart or the uh, form is pretty much the same. Uh, you can enter your time and date. The location here, in this case, it doesn't matter. You can just leave that blank. But the time and date will matter because it will actually update the time and date that those orbital elements are said to have been created. Uh, so you can set this for 2021, for example. And here, just leave the default values for the moment and generate. I need to change the label on that button. It says generate chart. It's actually generating the TLE file. And there you go. So it generates all these files. Uh, actually, probably want to adjust this because I think it destroys the spacing right now. It's formatting it as HTML, which isn't right. It's it's killing the spacing of the TLE file. So I'm going to have to reformat this in terms of how it's delivering it. Um, but I'll fix it. I'll fix it uh, before this video even goes up. And basically, you can see here it says 21. This is actually indicating that uh, these elements are for the year 2021. So you can dynamically generate elements uh, for the simulated satellites to load into other programs and you can generate them for any date that you want. Uh, some programs may check that and verify that the elements that you're using are at a reasonable date. Most programs probably won't but some might so it may be important for you to adjust the date as needed um, and uh, generate the elements that way. So yeah you'll be able to download these and load them into programs for use in visualizing these virtual satellites um, in other software uh, if you want. So yeah, you got 12,000 satellites here. Uh, you can just copy that and load it into a text file, save it, and load it into some other program. So I hope you guys enjoy and uh, I hope this website proves to be useful. This has sort of been a proof of concept for me for a website I'm developing right now uh, for my Astronomy Live actual live streams. Uh, where I'll be using the same planetarium program but in a very different way to show where the telescope is pointed currently during my live streams and potentially allow the viewers, you the viewers, to submit target coordinates and target objects to point the telescope at and be able to have some interaction there and control the telescope during my live streams. To do that it'll be using the same kind of deal here uh, where it's all being driven by Python under the hood and uh, providing access to that through the website. All right, I think that'll do it for now. Um, so again, the link to this website will be in the video description. Hope you guys find it useful and uh, clear skies, folks.